Hey, what's going on guys? Just chilling outside today. I'm at the park right now. Decided to just answer a question outside for a change of scenery and I was just taking a walk, but I got a pretty interesting question in my inbox the other day regarding, this is what the question said. It's a little weird, but bear with me. The question asked, what is the art of software? And obviously I think the person asking this question didn't really have a really well-defined thing he wanted to ask but he had a like a feeling that he wanted to get across like what is the art of software or what is like the essence of software and on the surface that question sounds super fluffy right like what does that even mean it sounds like nonsense but if we think about it a little more i think we can break it down so that's where i'm going to that's what i'm going to try to do in this video and yeah let's just talk about it so i made a webcast a while ago about how a computer works and i gave this kind of my own definition of what a computer really is but my personal definition of a computer is just a bunch of software telling a bunch of hardware what to do and it all has to work together because remember if you just have hardware without software the hardware is like a brick right and if you just have software and no hardware to run it on like what what is that just like lines of lines of code to run on nothing so both of those things are almost like a unit they're obviously extremely separate entities like hardware versus software everyone makes a big deal out of it but they have to coexist to make anything useful so that's the first thing so just to refresh everyone my personal definition of a computer is a bunch of software telling a bunch of hardware what to do so if you think about that a little bit software pretty much is a convenient way for humans to just describe the behavior of a computer right you always hear those terms like oh computers just understand ones and zeros and obviously com we humans can't sit down and write a shit ton of ones and zeros all day so we need some kind of language some kind of programming language that we can understand where humans can write and that has to be somehow translated to the ones and zeros that a computer can understand so what a programming language really is is just a convenient way for us humans to describe and tell a computer what to do Let's talk about those ones and zeros a little bit. So you always hear the phrase, everyone says it, oh yeah, computers only understand ones and zeros. You send data across the network, it's always ones and zeros. So what exactly are those ones and zeros mean? So first of all, ones and zeros are just, for casual sake, it's binary, right? Binary is a certain way to represent numbers and it represents a lot of data. And computers only represent binary at the really, really, round level but if you take just the concept of ones and zeros that in itself is a little bit abstract right because the concept of a one and zero is just binary it just means on or off in the case of digital computers digital circuits that on and off means electrons going through metal or electrons not going through metal but that's just one interpretation of ones and zeros right that's just the computer interpretation of it you could have an analog version of ones and zeros so for example one could be the signal is on or zero could be the signal is off or one could be my hair is orange and zero is like my hair isn't orange but even the concept of ones and zeros itself is a little bit of abstract it's a little abstract because just in computer land ones and zeros translate to electricity but that's just with computers you can actually use ones and zeros to represent anything right I could use ones and zeros to be like I'm Chinese or I'm not Chinese so when you hear that phrase ones or zeros it's not even specific to computers it's just a way to represent information and it's binary okay so we before I, I was getting a little crazy with that ones and zeros thing but let's just stick to the realm of computers so in the computer realm in the digital realm when we think of ones and zeros that translates to you know electrons running through metal for the most part when we talk about computers so when people say oh computers only understand ones and zeros that's actually correct because special ones and zeros represent special instructions that actually are you know electricity flowing through metal again but those special instructions will instruct various parts of the hardware what to do right you'll have special ones and zeros that tell the computer processor to add and you'll have different ones and zeros to tell the computer processor to subtract but all those commands are encoded in ones and zeros and in our case that's going to be electricity in metal so at the rawest level at the rawest level a computer understands these ones and zeros a computer understands electricity this is when the programming language stuff comes in but imagine you as a person 
how to actually physically write every single one and zero to program and describe the computer, tell the computer what to do. Let's say, for example, you're writing a program and you wrote 100 million lines of ones and zeros to tell the computer to like write a simple script, run a simple script. So imagine if you had to do that. Nobody in their right mind would want to write 100 lines of ones and zeros, right? You need a better way to do that. Next, take it just one level up and say you decided to, instead of writing your program in ones and zeros, you write your program in assembly, right? Really, really basic instructions, add, multiply, subtract, branch, whatever. But you write basic assembly so it actually reads like human words, like add. Add is a human word so we can understand that. But that assembly now is digestible by a human. We can write it and that's going to translate to the ones and zeros. So. Let's just, for example, if you wrote 100 million lines of ones and zeros, you'd probably have to write close to that number of lines of assembly. So let's say you wrote 100 million lines of assembly to do your same exact program, but it's readable. A human can do it. So again, let's just take this one level up. Nobody in their right mind writes too much assembly. Some people do, but you don't really want to write that too much. There has to be a better way of describing behavior on top of assembly. So let's say we wrote 100 million lines of assembly. Let's say we use C now. We got C, we got a compiler, and we can actually write C code to create that assembly for us. And now with C, we got nice stuff like for loops, variables, while loops, whatever. But let's say now we write only 10 million lines of C code. So we just came from 100 million lines of assembly. If you do it in C, let's say you can do it in 10 million lines. And let's say you don't like C. If you just go one level up, let's say you use Python now. So maybe in Python, it's even nicer. You have like even better language functionality than C does. And now you can write just 1,000 lines of Python to describe the same exact program. So hopefully you guys are getting the gist of the program, just of my idea. But at the basic level, you just have ones and zeros. Nobody in their right mind is going to do that and that's going to take the most, that is the most verbose way to describe a computer's behavior, right? But if you go each level up, you can actually take shortcuts and describe that behavior better. Instead of writing a hundred assembly instructions, you could write a for loop, right? And then just take it up and up and up and up and you have just crazy language features, but all of it at the end of the day translates back down to ones and zeros all a language is doing for you is giving you a convenient way to describe the behavior of a computer more concisely less verbose so that that's kind of the essence of programming languages so i think you guys get my picture but the essence of programming language is just to describe behavior we have to program something and what exactly do we want to program but we want to program cool hardware right nothing we do would even be worthwhile if we didn't have the cool hardware that we could write software for so that's all the computers, the networks, everything. And if we didn't have that, software almost would be worthless, right? Let's just take a couple examples of hardware and why it's so amazing. But just think about saving a file on your computer, right? You save a file to your hard disk and it's saved there without electricity. That's actually under the scenes. That's not even software doing its job. That's actually a very special, special purpose piece of hardware that's designed to store information even when there's no electricity attached to it and if you think about that that's pretty amazing how could we just store random ones and zeros how could we store bits of information with no power well we humans have designed a way to do that and that's like an insane piece of hardware um, we got to program that so what's another insane piece of hardware think about the internet right the internet is an insane network that connects everyone in this world there's you know lines in the ocean that create the internet that connect the continents but that itself is a hardware right there's physical wires and infrastructure to support the internet and you have that hardware you want to program it somehow uh, let's take another example the processor we talked about that enough but the monitor just the co a computer monitor or tv monitor is another insane piece of hardware right at the end of the day it's just a ton of lights behind the screen that turn on and off with different colors and tell us magical things right your computer screen it's just this crazy piece of glass and inside the glass they're just these LEDs or however monitors are implemented these days but you know it's a crazy visual hardware device that we've created and once we have that hardware it's pretty much useless unless you have some software to program it after that I hope everyone has a maybe a bigger appreciation of hardware too 
there's definitely a ton of hardware out there and then obviously we have the software to go on top of that and tell the hardware to do special things you want your monitor to show you you know your favorite flappy bird game or something but these things always go hand in hand so the essence of programming like the essence of programming programming languages software all that all that stuff is just for you for us humans to be able to tell a computer what to do and why would we want to even tell a computer why do we want to tell hardware what to do because hardware is crazy we've created insane hardware if you created crazy computer monitors we've created crazy storage devices we created crazy networks all this physical hardware stuff it would be a shame if we didn't have a way to program it all right guys i'm getting kicked out of the park it's getting pretty late but that was my rant for today hopefully it makes sense really unscripted but i'm just kind of bullshitting with you i just want everyone to just get a sense of what these two things really mean why they have to coexist why they're so important and why you know technology is so cool but hope you enjoyed the video and i'll catch you next time all right take care